Well, thank you very much uh, for everybody showing up today. Uh, I'm sorry, you know, when you talk about the page issue and what's happened in the Congress, I'm deeply sorry that this has happened. And the bottom line is that uh, we're taking responsibility because ultimately, as someone has said in Washington before, the buck stops here. For something like this to occur, our system obviously isn't designed for the electronic age of instant messages. When Congress found out about the explicit messages, Republicans dealt with it immediately and the culprit was gone. We are now trying to correct the problem. We've asked the Ethics Committee to look into this matter and we asked for criminal investigations to be opened by the Justice Department, the FBI, and the State of Florida. We have a toll-free number where people can confidently call. And we've reached out to experts around the country to put a system in place to make sure this never happens again. The tip number is 1-866-384-0481. We will do everything possible to make the program safe for the kids while they're in our care in Washington, D.C. And we will make sure that we can be a resource for their parents once they return home. We are looking for a person of high caliber to advise us on the PAGE program. I reached out to the Democrat leader and shared with her some of the ideas, and we hope to resolve this soon. Final point is our children need to be protected, and we are going to do everything we can to protect them. Take some questions. Mr. Speaker, yes, you said sir. this morning in the Tribune, you recorded saying that people who want to see this thing blow up are ABC News and a lot of Democratic operatives, people funded by George Soros. Are you maintaining, Mr. Speaker, that this story was fueled by political opponents? You know, I've, uh, in that point, uh, I only know what I've seen in the press and what I've heard. Uh, there's no uh, ultimate uh, real source of information, but that I, that's what I've read and that's what I've heard in the press. And uh, so I, I, the fact is, We've turned this whole thing over to the FBI for us to try to find out what happened. And uh, that's what we want to do. And uh, any member of Congress uh, that has, is involved in this or any staffer uh, needs to comply, and uh, the results are, will be there. Mr. Speaker, will you set the record straight on a couple of things? Tell us once again, if you will, when you learned that there was more than a minor problem, that this was truly something that had a predatory feel to it. And secondly, after you've answered that question, if you really did only learn a week or so ago, were you not let down by staff members who seem to have known much more? And if heads ought to roll, shouldn't some of them come from your own staff, if not you personally? I, uh, first of all, learned of this last Friday. When we're about to leave Congress uh, for you know the uh, break to, to uh, go out and campaign, and uh, that's the first time that I heard of the explicit language. When that happened, Republicans act and, acted, and the guy's gone. But but the fact is that uh, I don't know uh, who knew what when. Uh, we know that there are reports of people that knew it and uh, kind of fed it out or leaked it to the press. Uh, you know, we, that's why we've asked for investigation. Well, so so let, let me just say, that's when that. we've asked for an investigation to find who that is. If uh, it's members of my staff or they didn't do the job, uh, we will act appropriately. If it's somebody else's staff, they ought to act as appropriately as well. But nobody's, no, nobody's, admitted, nobody's admitted it to you. No one on your own staff has acknowledged knowing the seriousness of the problem one, two, or three years ago, and certainly no one told you about it. No. And if they There's didn't, have, were, were they derelict? Mr. Speaker, were they characterized as overly... I, I didn't hear the rest of your question. Were, were they, they derelict, Mr. Speaker, if they didn't let you know what was going on? Now, my staff uh, has been... Yeah, if somebody didn't let us know, 
then there's a problem, and I think the investigation will find that would out. You fire, would you fire a member of your staff? How were the emails characterized? How were they characterized? Were they just overly friendly? And not only as the speaker, but as a former teacher, coach, did that not ring any alarms to you? Uh, we were we were advised uh, in our office, and uh, then to the clerk's office, and then to the uh, chairman uh, of the page board, that there was a Katrina message. Period. We knew of no other uh, emails uh, that we uh, that in that system. There were no other emails other than that one that I know of, and we didn't even have the email because the parents didn't want to give the email out. They said, "Stop it." You know, the the guy that I asked to do that job a long time ago was John Shimkus. John Shimkus is an Army Ranger. He's a tough guy. He goes right to the point when there's a problem. Uh, he confronted the member. Uh, and uh, the member said that he would stop doing that, asked him if there was any other uh, messages. He said no. He said don't do it again. You know, that's what we did. The parents were happy. And, uh, you know, could we have done it better? Uh, could the page board have handled it better? In retrospect, probably yes. But at that time, uh, what we knew and what we acted upon was what we had. Uh, Kurt Fordham says that he passed this information along to Scott Palmer as early as 2002, four years ago. <laughs> you know, uh, it's interesting. Uh, Kurt Fordham also said that latest, or just about three or four days ago that uh, he worked for this guy for 10 years and uh, he never did anything wrong. So there's a little bit of difference in the testimony or, or what he said. Are you, are you still Over the saying? last several days, I'm sure you've been considering your own future and the impact of all of this upon the upcoming elections. Why have you decided to remain, if that's what you have decided? And will there be any other changes you think, among the Republican leadership? Well, you know, I'm going to uh, run and uh, presumably win in this election. And when we do, uh, I uh, expect to run for leader, for speaker. And, uh, you know, uh, I think everybody else will, too. But uh, our members ultimately make that decision. Speaker, there are reports that you've told some conservative groups that if you view that uh, your staying as speaker hurts the party, that you would uh, step down. Could you uh, tell us what But ultimately, any time that a person has to, uh, as a leader, uh, be on the hot seat, he is a detriment to the party, uh, you know, there ought to be a change. I became speaker in a situation like that. Uh, I don't think that's the case. Uh, I said I haven't done anything wrong, obviously, and uh, we need to come back. What we need to do is start talking about the issues. We have a great economy. It's because of Republican tax cuts and Republican uh, handling of the economy, holding the line on spending. Uh, we have uh, addressed the war on terror. Uh, we've done that continually over the last uh, uh, five years, and today we have a pretty safe America. And, uh, you know, a lot of us want a lot of people wanted us to address the uh, issue about uh, the border and we did exactly that and uh, you know last Friday we culminated in, in uh, appropriations that did fix the border so you know we have a good story to tell uh, our friends on the other side of the aisle uh, really don't have a story to tell and maybe they're resolving to another way to to, to uh, another uh, political tactic thank you very much. Mr. Speaker, this is not a good story where's the economy?